Hello and welcome to Euphoria. Today we'll come back for another look at the new town hall building mock that's under development for my Lego City. It's going to be quite a large building that has an important place in the centre of the city. This video is part of a series explaining how I develop the concept, design and build for a Lego creation of my own design. A mock or my own creation. Previously we've looked at the structural design and started on the detailed design of this mock. If you haven't seen part 5 of this series which started the detailed design then I would recommend looking at that one before continuing on with this video. We already looked at the detailed design of the facade, the main entrance and portico, and the design of the stairwell and staircase. In this episode, which is part 6 of the series, we'll continue from the previous one and complete the detailed design of this mock. So now we're going to jump up to the top of the building and start looking at the clock we didn't get as far as the clock when we were looking at the structural design and that was a bit of an omission because the design and positioning of the clock affects how the roof is built and how the clock will be supported. I looked initially at placing the clock at the front of the building as it's a logical place to put a clock and a clock often appears there in town hall buildings. I could have made that work, but I didn't really want a clock tower made of brick or stone, and if we're not careful it starts to look like a church with a tower, so I prefer to have a clock fitted on the roof. So I rethought it and designed a way that this part of the build is constructed, I added some arches to support the clock and the central part of the roof. And for that we can use those large arch pieces which are 12 bricks wide. The arches can be supported on internal walls which are placed at a spacing of 12 bricks. On the upper floors these walls form a central area of the building and on the ground floor they will form the entrance hallway. This eventually started to come together because these walls fit in with the new stairwell at the back of the building to give a central section that's consistently 12 bricks wide on each level of the building. For the clock itself I wanted to have a clock that was visible from the front and the sides. I'm obviously not going to have a working clock, but I did want to have a clock face that I could use and started looking at the different types of clock face pieces. There are quite a few of those available, but I eventually settled on one that I liked and that was available at a reasonable cost. And then I started looking at how to kind of frame the clock, provide it with a nice surround, and again there are lots of different ways to do that. So I ended up with a 4x4 four four dish for the clock face, with a surround around it, which gives me a 6x6 six six size for the clock tower itself. On top of the clock, I wanted to have some chimes, or what's called a carillon, with um, different bells in the top. And I found these nice decorative arch pieces, which would provide a nice frame for the carillon, with a little roof on the top, and then I can start to construct some bells inside. Now we're going to move on to considering the roof. 
In the video on the structural design, we worked out the structure for the roof, which will be built in sections. There will be the roof for the central part of the building, and two sections of roof for the wings. The roof structure will be built on a floor plate, which will form the ceiling of the upper floor. There will also be a support structure internally to support the roof, as without it a roof can be quite fragile. This roof is a slightly awkward shape because it's not a straight rectangle. I have to deal with the extension for the stairwell at the back and somehow deal with the clock in the middle. One way to resolve that is to use gables. So that means having a gable at the front of the building and a gable for the stairwell at the rear and a central section of the roof with the slope running front to back. The gable design uses slope or roof bricks and inverted slope bricks for the facing or barge boards. Of course the roof needs to be an even number of bricks wide to be symmetrical. To join the different slopes of the roof I use these inside slope corner bricks although they're not available in that many colours and I did have some issues with integrating the roof for the stairwell part with the main part of the roof. The new gables seem to be getting rather high again so I experimented with using those roof tiles with a lower slope. That seemed to work okay although I did need to adjust the walls to suit the lower slope of the roof and also adjust the way that the top of the stairwell is handled. I also looked at including some guttering in the roof and ended up needing some flat areas of the roof to kind of make it fit at the back which I'm not completely happy with and will probably have to revisit. Initially we put a window in the roof for the smaller roof sections for the wings in the form of a sloping window or skylight but later on I decided that perhaps wasn't appropriate to the style of the building and I put in more traditional smaller dormer windows instead just to provide some light into what is really just an attic space. I did also add an access point to that attic space in the wings by including some small doors in the end walls of the main part of the building. In this design phase we're also going to look at part selection and availability of colours. The choice of bricks and other Lego elements may be affected by which ones are available in certain colours or vice versa and this needs to be considered when determining the detail of which parts to use in the design. The Studio program has a useful facility to check the bricks in your model for availability of part and colour combinations. It also has the ability, when choosing colours, to only select those colours that exist for the selected part. There's also an indication of how expensive the different colours are for the part selected. But there's still a bit of an art to choosing the colours for a mock because there are often different parts or combinations of parts that do the same job and some of these combinations will be more available or cheaper and others may just not be possible. I'll look at this in more detail when I come on to the procurement of the parts for this mock 
But suffice to say here that it's an important consideration at this stage of the design. There's no point designing something that can't be built. I looked at various options for colours and decided that the medium nougat colour gave the best impression of brick walls and it was possible to continue with that colour because there's a good choice of parts including the masonry profile bricks and arches available in that colour. I'll use light bluish grey for the foundations. There were fewer options with the roof as the 33 degree slope pieces are available in fewer colours especially with the corner slopes but I found that I could use the dark bluish grey for most of the roof. I also started adding quite a lot of detailing in white which gives a traditional look to the facade of the building. Tan could also work here instead but in the end I settled on white. We also need to look at the colours for the internal walls but we'll cover this in a later video. Now I want to have a look at some aspects of the design of the interior for the building. I already mentioned that the building is divided up to some extent by the structural design, having the wings at each end of the building, the stairwell at the back and the central section of the building with its supporting walls. That gives a kind of natural division of the spaces within the building but we still have to look at whether those are left open to each other or closed off with internal walls and doors. I think that depends to some extent on what we think the internal spaces and the different rooms are going to be used for. I started to think about having a restroom on each floor and as is usual in a building these are often placed in a consistent position on the different floors of the building. I then also decided that uh, on the ground floor we'd have a restroom block in one of the wings and started laying out the restrooms in that block at the end and then at the back where we have the two WCs it's better to have much smaller windows than the large windows that we have in the rest of the building. So now we can look at the various rooms in the building. In the basement there will be four spaces. There isn't really any usable space beneath the main hallway except for structural support. The other four spaces could probably be used as storage or archive space and maybe for some equipment like heating and plumbing or for a janitor's room and a garbage room. Of course because this space is not really deep enough in this model it will be difficult to furnish these spaces. On the ground floor we clearly have the main entrance hall in the centre giving access from the main entrance and from there into the major rooms on each side and to the stairwell at the back. Here I'm thinking that the large space on the left hand side could be a main function room for functions such as weddings or civic events. The wing on the left could maybe be used for catering and on the right side that can be a reception area for the town hall and maybe customer services for visitors with the wing as we've seen being used for the restrooms. On the upper or first floor I'm thinking that we could have a mayor's office in one of the wings with secretarial and office support in the adjacent space 
and then on the other side we have a large room that could be the council chamber and then next to that maybe is the clerk's office or another meeting room. On the second or top floor we have two main spaces which could probably just be used as administration offices with the central area perhaps being used as a rest space or coffee area. If you have any ideas for the use of the rooms in the town hall then please let me know in the comments below. This mock has been designed so it's made of several sections or modules. Sections can be quite rigid and strong if designed properly and also if designed well they'll all fit together while enabling the building to be taken apart if required. For instance if moving the building or to gain access to the interior. So throughout the design I've taken care that the floors will be separable and that there will be sufficient connection points to provide registration points between the different sections. Each section has a floor plate, a part of course from the basement which is built onto the two base plates. The floor plates are designed in my normal way which is a set of plates of various sizes which are connected together by another set of smaller plates underneath to make up the floor plate for a section. In a few cases that's meant I've had to be careful with the design of some features such as the arches and the gables to ensure that there are clean separation lines between sections and to make sure that they sit on each other and support each other correctly. My large office building mock had large areas of glass on the outside and it had an internal girder structure and other internal support partly for structural support but also as part of the aesthetic of the design. For this town hall mock Support and strength is provided by the internal walls and with solid sections of wall I won't need to add girders and other internal structural support. By convention there's a pavement or sidewalk along the front of a modular building which is between 4 and 8 studs deep. For this mock We'll use the conventional pavement with 2x2 two two dark bluish grey tiles and the curb stones in a lighter colour at the edge so that the town hall fits in with other modular buildings in my Lego city. Also by convention there's one lamp post per base plate so as this is two base plates wide we'll add two lamp posts, one at each side. But when we put this building in position on the main plaza we'll adjust the style and position of the lamp posts to be consistent with the style of the other lamp posts that we use on the main plaza in my Lego city. At the back of the building we may just leave the base plate plain or tile it in a similar way to the front or maybe we could add some sort of decoration such as flower beds. So that was a look at developing the detailed design for this mock. This is where the design has got to so far as we've developed the design in the studio computer-aided design software. We circled back and adjusted the outline design slightly because, as I said earlier, the design process doesn't always go in a straight line. In these two videos on the detailed design phase 
we've looked at lots of detailed aspects of the design and this has moved the design on a lot further. We've looked at the details of the front entrance and the portico, the facade with the layout and details of the windows and how they're built into the building, the addition of the coins and other masonry colours to provide additional interest to the facade. After quite a lot more trial and error, we worked out how to make the stairs fit in with the floor levels in the stairwell at the back of the building. We looked at the clock and carillon and we completed the structure of the roof and looked at the details of its construction including the internal support for the roof and the means to support the clock on the top. We've had a first look at colours and the availability of parts to enable the building of this mock for real and we've had a look at the interior layout of the building. There's still quite a lot of work to do on the design to finish it off and there will no doubt be many more iterations to get the design finalised. But I think the design is maturing enough now that we can start the procurement of the parts needed to build the model. There is a risk with buying the Lego we need before everything is settled. On the other hand, I need to look at procurement because that may itself cause some further changes to the design if there are any issues with getting the parts we need. So we'll be looking at procurement in another episode in this series. Look out for the next episode in which we'll try to finalise the design for this mock, looking at some fine adjustments, fixtures and fittings, decorations and minifigures. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Please do let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos about LEGO sets, my LEGO modular buildings and my LEGO city.